Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Um, today we're going to be shopping my stash and this is the look that I came up with. Everything I use is all high end, but I'm shopping my stash and I encourage you to shop your stash as well because I'm sure if you're like me and makeup obsessed, you have a ton of products already. You don't need to go out and buy more. Even though it's fun, it's not necessary. So I've got this whole big bucket here of stuff that I've pulled to use and if you want to see how I got this look please stay tuned okay so my skin is all prepped and I actually filmed that video so you'll probably see that one after this one but my skin is all prepped with all of my skincare it's been sinking in for a little bit I've wet my beauty sponge and today as you already know from the title we're gonna do a shop my stash high-end so I have everything in this bucket here and everything will be high-end except for one brow product and my brushes are not high-end like some of them are nicer brushes but a lot of them are just random like wet and wild or morphe brushes so you're gonna hear a lot of rattling unless I edit it out but I've been trying to use up a lot of my stuff and I've really been enjoying this Estee Lauder um, futurist aqua brilliance watery glow primer it's super nice it just came in one of those like Ulta sample bags or something. I have so much stuff just sitting around. I haven't bought new in a while. It's like I need to start using this stuff up. I don't go anywhere hardly anymore. Like a lot of people don't. And so I wasn't getting ready. And I'm like, but then I'm just wasting makeup. Like it's first I thought it was a waste to put it on because I'm not going anywhere. I'm like, it's just as much of a waste. to let it sit there so I'm using it I'm trying to be better I used to put makeup on every single day when I was leaving the house so now that that's all in I'm gonna go in with my Estee Lauder double wear I have mine in the shade 3 W 1.5 fawn I'm just gonna dot this all over. I have a fresh fake tan on so this might not match perfectly but it'll even out with like bronzer and stuff and concealer. Make sure I take this down my neck. I'm just gonna go in with this dual ended It Cosmetics buff and blend brush. It's the number 23 and it's like a angled flat top angled brush. And I'm just going to kind of stipple that around and work that product into the skin. I take my foundation up under my eyes. If you hear snoring, it's Henry. He's over here trying to take a nap. His mom's annoying him. All this little boy wants to do is go sit on the porch in the sun. I promised him we would do that when I was all finished. I have a few other videos up on my channel. I've gone like really sporadic with my filming or recording rather. I have a hard time with myself like wanting to make sure everything is perfect and like if it's not perfect like I shouldn't even bother like no one's gonna want to watch that. But then I think about the stuff that I watch and when people say that in the videos that I watch I'm like I don't care I'm gonna watch whatever you post. You could post a video organizing your cookbooks and I'm like, I'm gonna watch it. It's more about the company for me when I watch YouTube and like having like internet, you know, internet friends and like people that share the same interests as you or, you know, that's why I watch YouTube. I also watch YouTube to learn. Um, so I have to keep reminding myself like, Maybe somebody will just want to have you on while they're getting ready or, you know, doing the dishes or just somebody for company. So if I can be that for someone in the same way that a lot of people have done that for me on YouTube, then I'm okay with that. I just have to keep reminding myself <laughs> that everything does not have to be. Okay, now I'm going to go in with my concealer. I'm actually going to use a corrector first. I don't think you can get this anymore. It's the Benefit Boing Brightening Concealer in the shade number two. 
again trying to use some stuff up so this is what it looks like it's just a light peachy tone and I'm going to go in with the other end of this brush and just pick some up I hope you guys can still see me I can't I can only see what you guys are seeing when I like do this This video is going to be so long because I can't shut up. Then I'm going to use this MAC Pro Longwear Concealer in the shade NC20. I haven't used it in a while, so I'm going to shake it up. I don't love the pump. I know, like, no one loves the pump on this. I'm just going to squeeze some of that onto my finger carefully. It's like popping up a can of biscuits gonna kind of dot that between and then dot that on the face my face not the face my face then I'm gonna go back in with that brush and just blend that concealer in I do really enjoy this concealer and I can use it like when I have a fresh tan on and when I'm a little bit more fair, not my absolute fairest because I can get real pale, but I think it has nice coverage. It blends nicely with a brush or a sponge. I've been on a brush kick lately, but I'll be bringing in a sponge here in a minute because my friend Kristen Game taught me something with a powder that I had that I wasn't fully loving and then I tried her little trick full on love it now okay now I'm gonna go in with my powder and this one is from red aspen this is the red aspen set translucent powder translucent loose powder my pores are fixing to disappear I already have spill quite a bit up here and what I'm gonna do make sure I don't have any creasing this is just a real technique sponge um, it's dampened and I'm just going to use the pointed end dip it in tap off any excess so that's what we're working with it looks like a lot but it's just picking up more on camera than what it really is it, there's hardly any powder on this and then I'm just going to set my under eyes with this. And this mattifies, but it's not drying. Okay. So I don't know if you can tell a difference. Let me switch over here so I can see the other side of my face. I don't, I can tell a huge difference in the smoothness of my under eyes. My pores are like non-existent anymore this dampened sponge changed the game for me if you have oilier skin it you might not need to do that but for me it was a game changer you need hardly any of this product like i'm i'm sold i already bought it and i'm sold <laughs> i'm gonna pull my skin taut <laughs> And just press that into the skin. And then I'm also going to set my jawline. Which I'm just going to set pretty much the whole face with this. Especially because I'm wearing a hoodie. And I don't want a bunch of makeup getting all over it. So this is the Jaclyn Hill, Jaclyn Cosmetics Do Me Luminous Powder. It is so pretty. And I wanted to show you another trick from Kristen. You know how like these will come with those stickers that cover the holes? I used to just rip the sticker off. No, no. Cut like half of it or just expose a few of the holes. That way you don't have a ton of powder flying everywhere like I do on my setting powder. 
just get like the perfect amount. Just tapping some into the cap. And then I'm going to go in with this e.l.f. small tapered brush. I love this brush. I keep holding things up too high. I'm sorry. So I'm just going to tap into the cap. Get some of the excess off. I'm just, I can still use this. This just gives such a pretty glow. Because it took away a lot of that glow with the setting powder. And now I want to bring some life back to the skin. That's so pretty. It's such a pretty color or powder. Let's see. We'll do bronzer next. I may have to switch it up. I don't know if this is actually going to be dark enough for me right now. This is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palette from one or two holiday seasons ago. I'd always wanted one and so back then I had the funds to get it and I got it. So you just have a bronzer, two blushes, two finishing powders, sorry, two finishing powders and a highlight over here. I'm going to use that bronzer on this Eco Tools brush. This is old as the hills. I got it from Walgreens a hundred years ago. So I'm just going to pick up quite a bit of that. I really like these powders. Mm, I'm probably going to need to grab something else. The only other bronzer I have that's really high end that might be dark enough is this one. It's also from Red Aspen. It's in the shade Copper Grove. This is a matte bronzer. So I'm gonna go in with this and see if that helps. Yeah, you can definitely see that more. This is also a really nice bronzer. It has hyaluronic acid in it. vitamin E. It blurs imperfections. It's blendable, buildable. Like I'm not having to work to hurry up and blend it out. Take that under the jawline, down the neck a little bit. This earring is itching the far out of me. I'm just gonna have to not have that earring in today, I guess. We're just gonna have this is also hurting my ear, so bye. <laughs> we'll just have one earring in, it's it's totally fine. Now for highlight. I'm gonna try this highlighter in this hourglass palette right here. This is in the shade. It's the strobe powder, glistening strobe light, and I'm gonna go in with a color color pop just says F5. I love this brush for highlighting. Oh yeah. This isn't a blinding highlight by any means, but if we can build it up, it'll be a natural glow. I'm also taking that like onto the apples in my cheek. And then whatever's left on the brush, I'll take on my forehead. I'll dip back in get the tip of my nose just because I'm doing it doesn't mean like this is how you're supposed to do it it's just how I do it Cupid's bow and chin and then for blush I'm going to jump away from this and go into the bougie rouge palette the Ro rouge romance palette from Jacqueline cosmetics and the eye palettes that I brought are kind of warm, so I think I'm going to go in with this shade here. This is in the shade Fancy Pants. These blushes are pigmented. I really, really enjoy them. This is a Morphe M530. I'm just going to pick some product up, tap off the excess, and then just kind of tap and swirl. I bring my blush up this way and I make sure I really work it into my hairline so there's not like a stark contrast of where my makeup is and where it's not. 
I'm also going to go in with some of this more orangey blush in the shade Tea Room. And kind of put that back here a little bit. Blend it all together. So yeah, this is a great, great blush palette. Then I'm going to go in with my contour palette. I don't know if they even make this anymore. I know it's no longer Kat Von D. It's KVD. I got this at TJ Maxx. I don't even know how long ago. This is a more VE8 brush. I really like it for contouring. So I'm going to go, when I'm tan, I'll go in between the darkest and the middle shade. And when I'm more fair, I'll bounce between the middle and the more cooler shade. I also use this for eyeshadow. This is a great, if you're traveling and you just need, like, I just need as few things as possible. This is a great every day. Just throw it on, get some contour to your eyelids of a palette so i just bounce between the darkest and the middle i'll start way back here by my hairline don't you don't want to go too low because then it's just going to drag your face down so go up here and kind of stipple and then i blend but as i'm blending i'm not blending this way or whatever i'm trying to like stay up but i'm blending in small circles and then whatever's left i'll go like this that's just how i contour my face every face shape is different you stipple it on like that and then blend and then whatever's left go like that do the temples kind of right here bring my forehead in some and we'll do my jawline I also bring it up like all the way around like I don't just stop here I bring it all the way and then really, really blend. And bring that down the neck. I don't just stick to under where my jawline is. I try to blend a little bit up. So it's a nice fade. And then this Luxie brush. It's the Luxie... 207 medium angled shading brush. I've been really enjoying this for my nose contour and for that I will go into the more cool shade. Tap it off. I'm just gently dragging this down the sides of the nose. Tip and you want to make sure you contour all the way through here. Otherwise it'll look kind of funny if you just have lines like from here down. This makes it look a little bit more as natural as all this makeup can look, you know. Makes it flow a little better. And then sometimes, I don't do this every time, I'll go with that cooler shade again under my lip. Just makes it look a little fuller. So I pulled out two eyeshadow palettes. One of them is a Natasha Denona eyeshadow palette. This is in the... The Peak Eyeshadow Palette. It's the Viseart Palette. This is the Neutral Mattes. I thought I might want some more depth to my shades instead of just this. So first I'm going to pat out any creases on my lids from the concealer and foundation that I kind of worked up there. That's how I prime my eyelids usually with just whatever is kind of left over on my foundation brush. This is from It Cosmetics. It was one of their holiday sets a long time ago. Just a shadow on it. So I'm gonna tap into this lightest shade. These are very pigmented. I will give them that. Um, I've used this palette a handful of times. It's fine. You don't need to spend Natasha Denona money. Like I said, the only reason I have it is from BoxyCharm. So I'm going to pop over to the Viseart palette. I feel bad going between these two super expensive palettes, but this is a high-end shop my stash, so. I'm going to try this shade here. This is a Morphe... I really do enjoy Morphe brushes. The Morphe M504. 
So I'm just going to start with this shade and then we'll gradually go with deeper shades. Okay, and then I'm going to go over to the Natasha palette. I'm going with this shade, same brush, and just start to deepen things up gradually. This is just a slightly more tapered brush than the one I was using. This is also from Morphe, the R37. I'm going to go in with this orange shade and the Natasha Denona palette. Deepen up my crease even more. Start to bring that onto the lid, just like the outer third. Kind of leaving this inner part as blank as we can. And what I'm doing, I'm just picking a little bit up on the brush, stamping it here. Wherever you put your brush first, that's where the most color is going to get deposited. So stamp it here, and then I'm just kind of working it in tiny little circles to the inner part of my eye and then kind of back out again. Now I'm going to go in with an even smaller brush. This is also from Morphe. This is the M506. I'm going to wipe that off on my shorts again, and I'm going to go into this chocolate brown color. This is a really pretty brown, as far as browns go. And now I'm just going to bring that smaller and smaller and really start to deepen this up. I'm not going as high up on my lid and as far out. I'm trying to keep it a little closer in so we don't lose that warmth. Well, you know, I wouldn't like seek this out. But they're not bad. I mean, if you have the money for it, go, go, get it. That's why I like like subscriptions like that because you can get higher end products and like one thing will more than pay for the box itself. And so it's like a nice little treat every once in a while. And if there's something you don't care for in the box, they make a great gift for somebody else. It's brand new, usually high end makeup. Like, here you go. <laughs> I do that a lot. I pass on a lot of my makeup and skincare that I get because I there's no way I can use it all. I'm trying to decide if I want to go any deeper in the crease. I think I will. I'm going to pop back over to the Viseart palette. I don't know why I'm popping so much, but I'm popping back over here and I'm going to go to this dark brown in this palette and see if we can get this a little deeper. That's more like it. This is just the same brush that I was using for that chocolate brown from the Natasha Denona palette. Just kind of feathered that onto the lid a little bit. Teeny tiny circles. I think I'm going to reinforce some of this orange so I'm going to go back with this brush and dip. Switching back to Natasha. Just going to kind of reinforce the warmth. And then I'll go back to the first brush we used. Go into this kind of rosy shade. I'm doing a horrible job at showing you. Back into this rosy shade. Kind of blend the outer edge with that. There. Now here's where I need to decide if I want to go in with this shimmer shade or if I want to keep it matte. Let's go in with some shimmer so I can show you some more stuff. I am going to bring in a shadow base. This is the, oh, this is from Alamar Cosmetics, Pero Primero Primer. Please don't come for me for butchering how I said that. I'm not very good at it. I'm going to get a teeny tiny amount. And I'm going to go between both of my index, index fingers, my middle fingers. And kind of 
kind of, I'm gonna need more than that. I usually use the NYX glitter base and you don't need hardly any from that. And then I'm gonna find my favorite brush from Wet n Wild. I usually get these from the Dollar Tree or Walmart, just wherever you can find them. These, this particular brush is kind of hard to find. Um, I'm just gonna pick up the shimmer shade. And pat that on the lid. And now I'm working from the tip of the brush for my crease and I'm just kinda, I don't have any product on it. I'm just trying to blend what's already there. And now I'm just kind of flicking out like this to feather into the dark brown. I'm gonna go between the two dark browns that we used and kind of go back over just the outer edge of where that shimmer is. And I'm also gonna reinforce the darkness in my crease. The same shades I used, the same matte shades I used on my upper lid, I'm gonna use on my lower lash line. So I'm gonna go in with that peachy shade from Viseart. And I really like a blown out lower lash line. And I'm kind of bringing that back and connecting it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do my brows. I'm gonna use a couple different products and I might have to pull in a drugstore brow pencil, I don't know. This one is from Winky Lux. This is the only high-end brow product I have. Um, well, that's not true. I have a Mary Kay brow product. So we might pull this in instead of the drugstore one. This one is just super cool tone. I need to get a different shade. I do really like the brow product. It's just not a good shade for my hair. I have a hard time finding a shade that'll work. Yeah, we might have to pass this one on. We're passing this one on. I'm gonna go ahead and brush this brow. The only thing I'm not a fan of of the Mary Kay one is it doesn't have a spoolie. But I mean, I have enough spoolies other places. It's not a huge, it's not a deal breaker at all, so. I'm gonna pass this brow pencil on to my mom. I know she would really enjoy it. So I'm gonna put that with my empties, even though it's not empty, so it doesn't go back with my regular stuff. So I'm gonna get this Mary Kay brow pencil. This is in the shade black brown. I think the other one was just a universal. Got some eyebrow hair on there. So I'm just gonna crank some of it up. This is just your traditional skinny brow pencil. Okay, I'm gonna see if there's anything left. This is just the Urban Decay Brow Blade in the shade Dark Drapes. The pencil is long gone. I don't even know if there's any product left in this marker. I should probably shake it up. I'm just gonna go, I have to like kind of like zone in. So I'm just gonna go directly at my face and flick up really lightly. Okay, there's still a little product in here. I think this needs to go in the empties bin. <laughs> yeah, she's gotta go in the empties bin. Cause she empty. Found it. This is a the Anastasia dip brow. Yep, dip brow gel in ebony. So I just use, it comes out with a little bit of goop on the end of the brush for the spoolie. So that's what I'll use to go through the tail of my brow to deposit more pigment. And then I'll flip it and brush my brows up with that. There's really not much on there now. And I'll just brush the rest of that product through. So I'm gonna go in with the Laura Geller Spackle Mist 
restore in coconut water. It smells really nice. The mist is wonderful. This is another subscription box thing. I'm going to do way too many mists. And then fan it. And then I can open my eyeballs. I also have this super fancy fan. To help dry that a little faster. Okay, to finish up the eyes, I'm, it's the Starlet Powder in number 13. So I just use whatever's in the cap. Sometimes it'll shake up the little container to get some on the cap, but I don't need to do that right now. And then this is a teeny tiny little Morphe M213. This is what I'll use for my inner corners and to go up under my brow bone. Just a little. And just put a little bit of that on my inner corners. And then I'll just use the tip of the brush back into the cap. A little bit. And I'll go up under my eyebrows to highlight. So this is from Red Aspen. It's the Pump It Up Maggie Mascara. This is my second tube that I've gone through. I really, really like this mascara. It has um, castor oil, vitamin E, all kinds of good ingredients to help condition and grow your lashes over time with repeated use. Shoot. You know, I was going to do liquid liner. I never do liquid liner anymore. I may not do liquid liner today. Let's do this mascara first and then we'll see where we're at. I'm also going to put on fake lashes, so it doesn't really matter. It's about time for a new tube, just because I'm almost at the six month mark. And you're really supposed to throw them out. But I went months without wearing any makeup, so to me that means I get more months out of it. I don't know if that's how that works, but that's, that's what I'm going to do. You, you can tell my eyelashes are really light in color, but they used to be like really sparse and like thin and short. So even if I would put mascara on, it didn't look like I had any lashes still. So you can see that is like a huge difference from this side to this side. And that's just one coat. <laughs> So I'm going to go do a second or coat on this other eye and then I'm going to do a second coat even though I'm putting on fake lashes. I just want to show you what this mascara will do. Um, all the Red Aspen stuff is, this wasn't supposed to be like a Red Aspen video, but, and they're not luxury prices, but they're more high end. I think Benefit, Too Faced kind of prices. Um. All the makeup is cruelty free, paraben free, talc free, made and assembled in the United States. This is made in Italy though. Um, I think everything we have is vegan except for we have a really bright eyeshadow palette and the reds in that palette, those are not vegan. But everything is cruelty free. Um, So there's one coat of the mascara on both lashes. So let's do one more coat. This mascara builds really nicely. It is not hard to remove. On me, it doesn't flake or smudge. I'm at the end of this tube's alleged lifespan. And it's still, it still doesn't flake on me. It has not dried out. So there's two coats. There's two coats, one coat. So there's two coats of that mascara on both eyes. I know I said I was going to put on fake lashes, but now I don't know. 
because that looks really pretty. Typically, I would have done liquid liner. Like, I was going to do a big wing today. But then I was like, I want to show you the mascara. And if I would have had a big old wing on, it would have been harder to see my eyelashes. Let's go ahead and do a wing. This is the YSL Eyeliner Effect Faux Sills Shocking Liquid Liner. You don't need this eyeliner. It's a nice eyeliner, but you don't need it. I'm just going to shake it up a little bit. This is a felt tip brush. And I'm going to just do a line across my lid first. And then we'll build the wing. So hopefully you can see me. If you need to go in short little strokes, that's totally fine. And then you can just kind of connect it later. So that's just with a line across. And then I'm going to take take the eyeliner and I'm going to go like from the tail of my brow with the tip of the liner and gently drag it down. You don't want to like totally stretch your face out so I kind of look back a little bit because if you stretch your skin it's going to make the wing look a little wonky. I got to really get in into position here for this. Hopefully you can just see what I'm doing because I don't know if I'm going to be able to really explain what I'm doing while I'm doing it because this takes a lot of concentration. So you just drag it like that and then I'm not going to go to the very end of the wing of the line I just made. I'm going to go a little bit further in that way the tip of the wing stays as sharp as possible and I'm just going to do the same thing but I'm going to drag it and connect it over here. So there's a wing. I did it. I hardly ever do wing liner anymore. I don't know if I'm going to be in frame for you to see the other eye. I need to start to store this tip down instead of in a drawer because it's taking a while for the product to flow. I will say my wings, I know they're never even, they're never the same, they're never perfect. My eyes are different. <laughs> this eye is bigger than my left eye and my left eye also kind of goes down a little bit like that droops but like it's just that's just how it's shaped. So a lot of times even my fake lashes they'll look like they're wonky or like one's too big and the it's I recently noticed that and it I was not happy about it. that's the way my face is though so we're just gonna it is what it is okay. I can't change it. So there's our wings. Now I'm going to go in with my eyeliner, my pencil liner. This is something I will not buy a high-end high version of. I don't care how good the high-end version is. There's no reason when this is perfect. This is the best pencil liner. It's like two or three dollars from the drugstore. This is the Extreme Lasting Liner from Essence in the shade Black Love. It's waterproof. Don't get the, the twist up kind, that's not the same. You have to get the one you have to sharpen. So this is gonna be probably gross, so if you have like weird eye things, don't watch. But I'm going to gently lift this because if I don't, I'll get product on my eyeball and my eyes are really sensitive, so I don't feel like having a headache today. I'm just going to gently and I'm not even doing my full waterline, like it's a lot thicker than that. I'm just doing the edge and I'm kind of flicking up to get in between the lashes to get anything that's missed. I'm being very gentle. See how that also makes the lashes look a little fuller and it'll help too when we have the falsies on to blend it all together. Henry is sawing some logs down here. 
And then I'm going to, I'll go ahead and do my lower lash line so I can use the chocolate brown eyeshadow. So again, I'm not, I'm not tugging. I'm not putting a lot of pressure. Gently pushing. I will have to actually remove this eyeliner at the end of the day. Like even in my upper waterline, it will still fully be there. I know everyone's eyes are different, but this is seriously such a good liner. Then I'm going to go in with a flat. Flat top kind of liner brush. Again, from Morphe M432. I'm going to go in with this Viseart palette into that chocolate brown shade that we used over here. And I'm just going to get some of that on the get some of that on the brush, tap some of the excess off and wiggle that in between the lashes to kind of try to buff out that eyeliner. Okay, so the eyes are done except for lashes. I don't even know what these lashes are, and I'm sorry. I can see if I can find when I ordered them a long time ago. They are super fluffy and super dramatic. Where's the little thing? I've trimmed these a little bit so they're not as long left to right as they used to be. But they are, they're gorgeous. And then lately I have been using a little alcohol wipe to clean off my eyeliner pencil and also my lashes before I use them. And it's helped with, like I said, I have really sensitive eyes, so it's really helped me and not have so much irritation. I used to put my lashes on with, just with my fingers, and then I had tried just regular tweezers like the slant tip tweezers. But these lash tools are super, super handy. This one here, again, is from Red Aspen. It's the only lash tool I have that's like this, other than like tweezers. It's super, super helpful to put on your lashes. I didn't think it'd be that beneficial, but it really is. This is also my favorite lash glue. My lashes are not Red Aspen. I'm pretty sure they're a Kiss Lash. This is the Red Aspen Lash Glue. You can get this separately. You don't have to get lashes and all that stuff. Um, it goes on white and then when it's ready to put on when it's tacky, it's almost like an iridescent clear blue color. And that's how you know it's time to put on your lashes. So I'm going to do one lash at a time. I'm just going to grip it between my index and my thumb. This is a brush on lash glue. So I hope you'll be able to see. I'm just going to brush a thin layer of glue on. It's hard for me to see up that high. I used to reinforce each end of the lash band with more glue. I don't do that anymore. I don't need to. So here's what that looks like. You can tell, I think you can tell. It's more white right now. And then you want to wait 30 seconds to a minute for your lash glue to get tacky. Because if you put it on now, it's not going to stick down. It's just going to slide all over and you're going to get glue everywhere and you're not going to, you're not going to have a good time. So I've just got it waiting here in my little lash tool and I'll flip the direction of the lash tool between each eye. So right now it's kind of tilted that way. When I do my other eye, I'll flip it and put it this way. That way it's, you know, going that way. It's easier for me. So I'm just going to let the glue get tacky and then we will apply the lash and then we'll apply the other lash and then we'll do our lips. And then I'm going to drink some more water and sit on the porch with this poor baby over here who just wants to sit in the sun. Okay, so the glue's gotten tacky. You can tell it's not as opaque anymore. I've gotten a fuzz. So I'm just going to come real close to my mirror. I'm going to get it kind of where I want it and then set it down.
and then I'll stick down the edges, push the lash band to my skin, and last I'll set down the inner corner. And then I'll take my fingers because I feel like I can make sure I can feel the resistance better make sure that I'm really pushing the lashes onto my eyelid if I use my fingers at this point instead of a tool but that was that's it <laughs> there's one lash now I'm gonna do the other lash you don't want to put too much glue on either like I didn't have a ton of glue it's just a thin thin band see what I mean I'm gonna flip it clamp it on like that and then I'll just hold on to it while I wait for the glue to dry you can pinch your lashes together you can use the end of this to press the lash band down You just want to make sure they're really on there and don't don't be messing with them don't be trying to re you know stick them down leave them alone you can't be repositioning if you need to reposition you have to fully take it off take off the old glue start over there we go there's our lashes I've got makeup on my sweatshirt now we're gonna do lips I don't know if I have any high-end lip liner that would work for this look or not. I've also been tossing around the idea. I have a lot, a lot of lip products that I have had for a long time. And I have too many and I don't reach for them because I'm like, I don't remember what this looks like. They're still good because I went through and decluttered all the old stuff, like the bad stuff. I thought about doing like a try on of all my lip products. I don't know if that's something anybody want to sit and watch, but. So we'll use this IBY lip liner in the shade Rosebud. I'm going to get a fresh sharpen on it. This is my favorite sharpener. It's from Ulta. I have one for eyeliner and one for lip liner. So I'm just going to line and slightly overline my lips a little bit. And then we'll go in with our liquid lip. I'm going to go in with this Tarte, Tartist lip paint in the shade Get It. Get it, get it, get it. Then I'm going to go in with the Jaclyn Cosmetics Pout Spoken Liquid Lip in the shade Oh Hi. This is her lightest shade. I really love this. Just like how she said, she likes to use it. Just tap it in the center. They smell really yummy too. I like cupcakes. And then just blend that out. That's it. That's going to be the finished look. I'm not going to go in with another lip liner. I'm happy with the way that looks. I think it looks perfectly fine. So, it's the finished look. I'm going to clean the liquid lip off of my hand here. Try to fix this hair. So that was it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if there's anything that you have a question about, please ask me. Um, I'm super new with this, so um, I'm open to suggestions or whatever you want to see. Um, I can do a little bit of everything. Like we're redoing our house still, um, so I can like show you that kind of stuff. Um, we do cooking stuff, cleaning. Like, I don't want to just pigeonhole myself with one thing. So I know that might not work for like the YouTube 
algorithm, but I want to put out content that makes me happy and not like force myself to do stuff just because like to make it successful. Like I just like if I could be your internet friend or whatever, or, like keep you company, like I said, like that's what I want to be here for because that's what I come to YouTube for. So yeah. We're just going to do all kinds of stuff here and we're going to have fun and we're going to be kind to one another and so okay i'm going to go i'm going to quit rambling this video is going to be long enough so yeah take care um subscribe before you go hit the thumbs up all that stuff i feel really weird saying it but i would love it if you did it <laughs> bye I have to stop now goodbye